Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today we have a new backdrop because we're going to be talking about nutrition today. So specifically, we're going to be talking about how nutrition can impact your performance and really how we can get the most out of your nutrition to optimize your performance in the gym. So this is a really, really broad topic. There's going to be lots of different areas that people are going to be asking questions about, uh, trying to gain weight, trying to lose weight, trying to optimize performance. I'm going to paint with pretty broad strokes. I'm going to try to cover all of those topics at least briefly. But I asked on Instagram yesterday what people struggle with with nutrition, and I got some good answers, actually some things that I may not have uh, thought about normally. So I'm going to be trying to cover the majority of those things that people ask there, as well as just trying to help come up with a pretty good guide for what you should be looking for to optimize your performance in the gym. So to start things off with, I'm going to be talking about tracking food a good bit here. This is something that I think is pretty critical. I, I think that there's a lot of other ways to have a generally good diet, but just like every other video on my channel, we are trying to come up with the best way to get the most out of yourself in the gym. If you don't want to track your food, fine. But if you have doubts about why you're not doing better, if you have doubts about your nutrition, tracking is going to be the best tool there is. And that's really all there is to it. I think people understand those things when it comes down to lifting, that people are very willing to use a spreadsheet and track what they're doing in the gym and keep track of their performance. But for some reason, nutrition, people tend to not want to put the effort in. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't put the effort in, in the kitchen, we'll say, you are not going to be able to perform your best in the gym. So when I'm talking about food tracking, Specifically, I'm going to be using an app called Macro Factor. I've recently become an affiliate with this brand. I, I've used MyFitnessPal for a long time. There's plenty of apps that work well. So I used MyFitnessPal for uh, 10 years probably of tracking food until uh, Macro Factor came out in the last few months. And I gave it a shot because I'm familiar with the people who created it, the Stronger by Science guys, and I absolutely love it. So. If you are tracking your food somewhere else, or if you have not tracked your food before, my macro factor is for sure where I would recommend. So I'm going to be using that, uh, using their app for some visuals here, um, using their app specifically for talking about how to, to include some of the things that we're talking about. If you haven't used it before, you can use my last name. You can use Wilson and you'll get a two week free trial for the, for the app. But Genuinely, I think that if you're not tracking your food, you are very much missing out on opportunities here. So anyway, I'm going to be referring to Macro Factor as the primary tool for tracking. There's other options. It's all going to be the same, but I, that one to me is the best. So starting off, I think we, what we need to maybe, maybe I'll talk about uh, practicality and, and myself for, uh, for some context here. So my life is not that bad at the moment. I work from home, obviously. Um, training is set up in a way to where I can, you know, eat regularly. I don't have to worry too much about timing and, um, you know, worrying around a busy schedule and trying to come up with meals. So that is definitely a benefit now, and it's something that impacts my training very positively. That has not always been the way for this way for me. So getting going, I was a firefighter years ago. So every third day, I would spend uh, 24 hours at a station with other guys who did not like to eat the way that I did. They, they definitely uh, ate a lot more, uh, you know, fattier foods and those kind of things. And I still was able to make it happen. And we'll come back to strategies there, but I'm setting up the context. After that, I moved into more personal training. So about two years, I was working as a personal trainer in a Gold's gym. And I was working 11 hour days or I was at the gym for 11 hours a day, I would get there at six o'clock in the morning and I wouldn't leave until seven o'clock in the evening. And I would have about three hours in the middle of the day for my, for my lunch, my training, post-training meal, all of that. So I've been there. I've been there, done that. Even when I owned the gym, I would have to be up there at five o'clock in the morning and spend pretty much my entire day. So the main thing is just that it comes down to preparation. And if you're not willing to prepare, then you're not going to be able to accomplish these things. So that I think is the biggest barrier for people. And I'm here to tell you that I hate cooking. And I always have. I can cook, 
but I really don't like it. I don't like spending the time. I don't like spending weekends or whatever trying to put together big meals. And so I have found many strategies to still do the best I can here and make things easy. And I think that that's something that, that people tend to miss. They, they hear these, these uh, I don't know, people talking about meal prepping and spending all this time. And if you're not willing to prepare, you're not gonna make it happen. And I prepare in a totally different way. I find foods that are easy to put together and rice that comes in bags even instead of having to boil it. So there's definitely strategies that you can use to be able to avoid the big laborious tax, task of actually having to cook all the time. And if you're somebody who just doesn't wanna do it, you can still find many, many options. So I cook ground beef every week is probably the, the heaviest lifting that I do as far as my cooking experience and I still am able to, to eat what I think is a generally pretty healthy diet, but I'm able to make sure that my total investment there is not more than I really want. Now, obviously now I could be investing more into it, but in other times in my life, it just wasn't a possibility, but I still made the effort to find ways to get it done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the importance of each macro. Uh, so if you are not, familiar with it, the macronutrients are the major nutrients that your body runs off of. So protein, carbs, and fats. Now there's micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals, and all those. I'm going to be skipping those completely. I, I am not a nutrition expert. This is strictly a performance-based conversation. Um, generally speaking, from a, a micronutrient perspective, probably the best way to make sure that you're eating a good enough variety there is just variety in your diet. Right, so not eating you know, just protein bars or something like that. Having a generally wide array of, few, of foods generally takes care of the micronutrients, especially if you're eating a lot of calories. Including some fruits and vegetables obviously is a very, very good way to do it. I don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So uh, the micronutrient stuff is, is a, an area here that I'm going to be acknowledging, but I guess skipping. So to start things off, we'll talk about protein. So, this was probably the biggest question, the most frequent question that I got uh, on Instagram, asking people what their struggles were. How do I get enough protein without going over my calories? And I, I was uh, a little bit puzzled about this question at first because it's, it's just a math equation, right? Like if you're trying to add up your, your calories, each macro has a profile. So for every one gram of protein, there's four calories. Same with carbohydrates, it's one to four fat every one gram is going to be nine calories. And I guess what I realized, I actually was having a conversation with my girlfriend about this, was that people, I think, underestimate how much fat is in the average protein source. So for example, let's say you eat a big steak, right? You have a big T-bone or something. You say, wow, it's so much protein. But there's a lot of times going to be equal amount of fat in that. And so if there's 60 grams of protein in this big old T-bone, there's potentially 60 grams of fat in there as well. And that's more than double how much protein as far as calories that you're getting, right? So 60 grams of fat times nine, you're getting a significant amount of calories. And people are like, wow, how do I get to my potentially 200 plus grams of protein without going over my fats? And that's where the value of including much lower fat protein sources makes a significant difference in trying to actually reach your protein goals. So. If you're using macro factor, I would totally recommend letting them create their diet, your diet for you. This is actually something that I've been hesitant of in the past was that, that I would use uh, apps like MyFitnessPal or whatever, and I just never agreed with their nutritional, nutritional recommendations. Macro factor jumped in first day and it pretty much nailed exactly the stuff that I was doing. I would recommend choosing very high on your protein, at least high for performance based, but very high I think is what I would generally recommend. So very high protein for me comes out to about 260 grams of protein a day. That's a lot. So if I'm trying to get my protein from uh, steaks and fatty chicken and even things like that, it's going to be a, a pretty difficult task to be able to get there. So we have to choose lower fat options. And this is where things like protein powders, fat-free cheese, uh, lower uh, fat percentage, things like ground beef. Now, 
going into the practicality as well, uh, eating things like turkey or you know ground turkey, those kind of things, I used to try. Pro tip, I guess, turkey is horrible reheated. So uh, I tend to go after the 96.4 ground beef is, is really my go-to there. And that helps me really get more protein without exceeding my fats. So as a general rule, fats are going to be the hardest one to budget. Protein, we have to emphasize throughout the entire day. I start off every single morning with a bowl of cereal to get my carbs going, and I always have two scoops of protein. So 50 grams of protein from my, from my protein powder itself, and then I use a, a Fairlife milk, that again, fat-free milk that has a lot more protein powder in it. So I'm starting off my day already with like 70 grams of protein in my first meal and very, very limited fats. That should set me up with a lot more options later in the day. And I think that's the biggest thing is that people just don't make a big enough effort to start getting their protein early enough and consistently enough. So every single meal that you have, you need to emphasize protein as a main source within that meal. So breakfast, lunch, dinner at least, uh, but I would imagine you know breakfast, lunch, post-training dinner is kind of a, a normal strategy for most people. Uh, but you know, I, I don't worry too, too much about meal timing, but I would say if you're eating three to five meals a day, if every single one of those meals has a good amount of protein, you're gonna be making really, really good strides in that direction. On top of that, I think that people do worry too much about getting their protein from whole foods and you know the, the impact there. The research basically is that, especially whey protein, is some of the most digestible protein, maybe the most digestible protein that there is. It's very, very bioavailable, so it does digest very easily. It's a very, very good source. It's potentially better <laughs> protein than some of the other proteins. So if you're worried about our performance impact of using too much protein powder versus whole foods, you should not be. I'm, I'm very liberal with my protein powder use while trying to have a relatively, you know, variety, uh, you know, relative variety in my, in my diet overall. So choose lower fat foods. If you like eggs, do some eggs, some whole eggs with egg whites mixed in. You can get a carton of egg whites and pour some of those in with your whole eggs if you, if you like the flavor and the texture of the whole eggs. But if you go over too quickly on your fat earlier in the day, it's gonna make it really, really hard to be able to actually get to your protein goals. So that's, I think, the, the biggest concern that people have. And it just comes down to planning early in the day, starting early. I don't like eating breakfast. <laughs> like I said earlier, I don't like cooking meals. I really don't like, like eating all that much. I, I like it overall but it's not something that I get like super excited for that I'm really trying to have you know, a huge creative meal. So I'm willing to have a bowl of cereal with breakfast and protein powder. That's fine with me, gets me going. So after that, if we're doing a good job maintaining our protein intake throughout the day, carbohydrates are going to be the second most important thing that we have to worry about here. So from a performance perspective, in macro factor, it's gonna ask you um, what your lifting is, kind of how you want to, to shift your calories. So I, I think most people watching this video will choose performance base. And what that basically means is that you are gonna be shifting more calories towards carbohydrates and a little bit less calories towards fat. So carbohydrate is gonna be your main source of energy within your body. You eat carbohydrate, turns into glucose, energy, good. So as we're emphasizing carbohydrate, it also is another area that we have to be a little bit interested in the amount of fat that we're getting. Like if somebody is, is eating potato chips or something like that, obviously there's going to be a significant amount of fat in those. So it's really important with every food that you choose to try to classify it as much as possible as a protein source, a carbohydrate source. And then a lot of times the fat sources are carbs or protein, but just they have a higher fat percentage within them. So if you look at my foods that I've chosen here, a lot of rices or uh, even like low fat pretzels and, and other, I mean, the cereals, things like that, that just inherently do not have a lot of fats in them. And that helps me get to my goal of, I think I'm eating uh, mid 400s with carbohydrates right now, um, and only like 75 or so grams of fat. 
And, and so it's just important to be able to emphasize the, the strictly carbohydrate based meals, especially before training. So carbohydrate is going to be one of the biggest things to think about in the context of training capacity performance in the short term. So I think protein may be one that you can look at as a more so recovery based tool. It's for sure important to be able to consistently have your protein to be able to recover from your training and build more muscle and all that. Carbohydrate will have a noticeable impact on sessions specifically. So if you fasted for a while, and, and I mean a while can be relative. If, you, if the last time you ate was last night and you're training early in the morning, it's probably not that big of a deal. It may be that you want to drink some Gatorade powder or something as you're training. Um, but if you've gone significantly longer than that, it starts to for sure diminish your ability to sustain performance. So if you just were going to the gym and you work up to a one rep max, you may be able to do that okay. But being able to continue to perform and do your volume and have your sets actually perform well for extended amounts of time, Carbohydrates are going to be absolutely necessary there. And also being able, shifting a little bit more calories instead of fat to carbohydrate will generally lead to slightly more muscle growth, potentially based on the research. There's probably not a humongous difference there. Calories are a, a, you know, the main factor, but we're really looking at the performance within the gym will most likely be improved by making sure you're getting enough carbohydrates. So going through my day, I start the day off with a bowl of cereal a bowl of cereal and some protein powder. So that gets me started at about 100 grams of carbohydrates um, right off the bat, um, getting, getting things moving. I train normally early afternoon is kind of what I'm going for. And then my lunch is a light lunch with a little bit of protein. I usually use some pastrami, um, pastrami with a bagel, make a little bagel sandwich here. So the bagel should have about 50 grams of carbohydrate. So I'm going into training already with about 150 grams of carbs in my body. This is something that I think is a lot more attainable than most people would think. So if you are somebody who has to train after work, you can very easily plan your day to be able to look pretty similar to mine, right? Let's say you have to train after work and we're saying that carbohydrates are going to be one of the most impactful things for your performance. So you wake up in the morning and you gotta get out of the house pretty quickly, so you go for the bowl of cereal and a protein shake, good. At lunch, if you're prepared, it's pretty easy to be able to have a bag of you know, 90 second microwave rice and some ground beef prepared. You take that to work, easy. Or a sandwich with the pastrami or whatever like I had. Now, if you're eating at noon and you're training at five, we're starting to get kind of close to the window where it really matters. I think about six hours is kind of where it's like, yeah, you should probably have eaten something. And you can have very easily a light snack, you know, late afternoon, four o'clock. You have a little bowl of pretzels or something like that, that again is low fat uh, and it's not gonna take up too many of your calories. So making sure that you have some easily plannable carbohydrate based meals or even just some Gatorade powder or something like that that can help make you uh, have a little bit more carbohydrate available in your body. So I think it is important to, to think about how you, uh, how you digest some of these things. If consistently having a, a big meal makes your stomach feel upset before training, or if you're constantly very hungry in training and that bothers you. For me, I don't like having a lot of food in my stomach. I would prefer to eat less before I'm training as long as I'm getting my calories in. I'm a lot more comfortable that way rather than being stuffed and kind of bloated and just not really feeling very comfortable. So those are things to take into account. Um, just making sure that you're consistently getting some, some protein and carbohydrates throughout the day. Fat will kind of come along for the ride. But at the end of the day, fat is where I would generally recommend people have a little bit more fat at the end because it is so, so easy to, I wouldn't say ruin your day with fat, but fat, because it's going to be our lowest macro, the one that we're allotted the least, I already said I do, 260 grams of protein, 450 carbs, and 75 fat. It's very easy to get to that limit very quickly. And so if we eat too high of fatty foods early in the day, we're gonna to have to make sacrifices later. We're gonna to have to be a little bit more strict later in the day to be able to fit that profile. So I tend to recommend people shift a few more of the, the lower fat foods 
early in their day, and then save the fattier foods once you're done with training and you wanna have a little bit more freedom in the evenings. And that brings in another practicality point, is that if you do plan through most of your day, you have more options for flexibility at nighttime, right? So if you get to the day and you have more planned fat available, you can have some freedom. You, you see that I have some of these fattier foods. I, I like the uh, Alexia sweet potato puffs and uh, French bread pizzas and things like that. Those are, those are foods that I just enjoy and I want to eat those things so I save those for the evening to have that flexibility or going on a date or any of those kind of things. Being able to budget the fat until later times makes a big difference. So on that note, we want to be able to stay, we, we want to be able to, to have that flexibility that if I do go over my fat or I go over any one of those different um, you know, macros there, that the total caloric intake is still going to be the biggest picture as far as your overall weight management, gaining or losing. So if I've budgeted 75 grams of fat and I end up at 150, I have to subtract it. Generally speaking, carbohydrates. I would not sacrifice your protein to be able to get to that goal. So if you eat double your fat, you'll have to reduce your carbohydrate by more than that, right? So one gram of fat is nine calories. One gram of carbohydrate is four calories. So essentially, if you go over by 75, you'd have to reduce 150, a little bit more, but 150 carbs. So you can still have options to have cheat meals and be able to deviate from your normal diet without actually impacting your body composition very much. Now, one day, one meal is not going to make a very big difference whatsoever, right? We do want to have flexibility. We want to be able to live our life in a, in a way that's actually enjoyable and fulfilling. So ideally, we should be investing in these things as much as we can but allowing opportunities to deviate, but there's still flexibility within that. We don't have to be perfect, but I can still go out to eat and have a, a big steak dinner and uh, you know, eat a whole lot of fat, but I, I just may reduce. I may uh, choose to have a little bit less food early in the day to be able to go there and have that big meal, and it just takes planning. Now, if you go over once a week, eh, it's probably not that big of a deal, but I would certainly plan on including those things, which by the way, macro factor does a good job of. If you overeat, track it. It does a really, really good job as long as your data is there. If you track that you went over and you track your body weight, it'll just assess that stuff and manage your, your calories accordingly. If you don't track it, it assumes that any blank spaces mean that you just didn't eat that food. So as long as you're including your data in there, it definitely works. If you, if you miss like half a day, let's say you track half your day and then you go crazy with it and you don't know how to track it, just delete the whole day. If there's, if there's no food in that day, it assumes it's just a missed day and it's not gonna assume that you didn't just like eat half your calories or something like that. So anyway, we for sure do want to have flexibility, but overall, the more consistent that we can make our nutrition, the better. One of the things that I, I say to my clients all the time is that nutrition, eating regularly is very, very similar in the way that we feel to sleeping. Now, if somebody goes and they sleep three hours in one night, they'll wake up immediately and feel like, oh, wow, I feel horrible. There's no way I'm going to train today. But somehow people don't necessarily feel that way with their nutrition. If they eat half their calories kind of by accident, they don't always know. They don't always know that like <laughs> they're going to go in and have a, a kind of a crappy performance. And especially if that's happening with regularity, if every third day or so you just under eat, then your performance is going to suffer. Your recovery is going to suffer. And people are like, well, I don't know why I'm doing so poorly in the gym. You're not taking care of everything that you could. So if your goal is to perform the absolute best that you can, you have to prepare, you have to plan it. It doesn't have to be all that complicated. So if your goal is to gain weight and you're struggling to include as many calories as you can. Don't worry so much about making everything perfect. You can include higher calorie foods in there. Instead of, instead of forcing yourself to eat a whole lot of rice, you can include bagels and even candy and pretzels and things like that to help get there. As long as generally speaking, you're eating a fairly nutritious whole food diet. And the opposite would be true if you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to lose weight, 
the better option for you is going to be to generally eat more vegetables, more whole foods, trying to avoid some of those higher calorie foods to be able to feel a little bit more satiated. So there's, there's always options and flexibility, but it just takes planning. But if you're trying to get the most out of your, your nutrition that you possibly can, you're just gonna have to invest in it and it really, really does matter. Hopefully this video got you started on what food selections really make a big difference. Like I've said throughout the video, simplify. Try to, try to make your food selections single, uh, single sources, single, single macro sources. If you're choosing a protein source, try to make sure that it's the majority of it is coming from protein and not a significant amount of fat. Same thing with your carbohydrate sources. Um, I, I think that the, the barrier to nutrition is probably lower than what people think. The barrier to using tracking, um, you know, weighing and measuring your food and all of that is something that I, I think is significantly lower than people really think that it is. And from my experience working with athletes and encouraging them to track their food, it takes like a week, right? If they, if they actually invest for a week, they'll discover where their weak points are, where they need to actually get more carbs, where they need to emphasize more protein. Weighing and measuring your food does not take much time. It's easy. Uh, I, I probably have showed clips of myself or even you know my girlfriend getting ready for work in the morning. It adds like five minutes total to your day and increases performance just dramatically. So anyway, make sure you check out Macro Factor in the description of this video. Use that code Wilson for an extended free trial. Um, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. See you next time.